so now that we know how the um, the bicycle is going to accelerate, how the velocity is going to change, and what is going to be the position, uh, let's look at the uh, the equations of motion, so the kinematics. Uh, we have a few more constraints in this problem, so. You know that the situation looks like, like this. We have theta over here. This is del mu. This is L. We can call these H if we want. So this is a right triangle over here. And we know that the definition of uh, cosine of theta is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent is W, the hypotenuse is L. Which means that L, which is the distance that the bike is actually going to go through, is W over cosine theta. The total distance it's going to be 2L. So we can write that as the, um, the displacement in section 1 plus the displacement in section 2. Um, you can, to make it a little easier, say that this is the final position. Um, after section one, this is the final position uh, total. So if you look at this plot over here, um, this distance over here has to be L. And this distance over here um, has to be L from here to here and here to here is the other L. And this L is W over cosine theta. So the height of this S depends on the angle. So if the angle is really tiny, then it's going to look kind of like this. And if the angle is really big, then it's going to be kind of um, more horizontal. So we have a fight here between the acceleration and the length. So this is going to be again section one and section two. So I'm going to bin this result. I'm going to put it up here. We have space, yeah. So now let's really focus on the, the kinematic equations. So we know that the total displacement is the position after one, plus you know, the displacement in the second part. We can use our friend the position as a function of the time kinematic equation that describes this. Which, in general, is written like this. Um, and I'm going to put it over here to have more space. So the displacement after the first segment is going to be given by this. So the initial position of segment one is zero. The initial velocity in segment one 
uh, is given in the problem is zero. So we can get rid of this term. So x1 uh, or x for the first segment is one half the acceleration in the first segment times t squared. So then x2 is going to be initial position of 2 initial velocity of the second segment and sine plus one half the acceleration in the second segment times t squared. So we know that the initial position of segment two is the final position of segment one. So The initial velocity of segment two is the initial velocity of segment one. How can we get the final velocity of segment one? Well, we can use our other kinematic equation. So this is the initial velocity, which is zero. The acceleration is given over here, time, so vi is equal to that. And we can rewrite this equation. So we can rewrite this again. So x1 is given by this over here. Um, vi is this one. times time, so we can put this squared over here, and finally this one. And we can simplify this even further if we look at the accelerations. So this one is positive, this one is negative, but they have the same magnitude opposite direction. So we have this condition. So that means that we can rewrite this as negative A1. And it's starting to look pretty good, right? So now we can get rid of this one and this one. And so the final the position over here is just acceleration um, in the first segment times t squared. So we know that this is going to be equal to. 2L. So 2W over cosine theta. And we're very close to getting what we want. So T is going to be the square root of 2W a1 
cosine theta. And A1 is G sine theta. So now we can use our trigonometric uh, identity. Sine of two theta equals two sine theta cosine theta, which is what we have over here. Right? So we can replace it. And so we can put the two over here. And um, we have this expression, which looks pretty nice. So if we want to minimize the time, the denominator over here has to be maximum. And what is the maximum value of, um, of g? The maximum value of 2 theta? Well, the maximum value of sine? Sine looks like this. So this will be pi over 2 pi 3 pi over 2 2 pi so you get your your whole circle so the maximum value of the time is over here at uh, pi over 2 so I'm just going to leave there there, have some space over here. So we want two theta to be equal to pi over two. This implies that theta is pi over four, uh, which is equal to forty-five degrees. So the angle that minimizes time is 45 degrees. Mm, I don't know, this is 90. So half uh, pi over four is 45. Uh, so this is two theta that we got from the trigonometric function. So we don't have more space, maybe over here. So if the angle is less than 45 degrees, then the acceleration is kind of too low, and it takes a long time for the bike to um, go through the uh, path. If it is over 45 degrees, then the gravity is kind of large, especially this gravity, but the length increases uh, too much. So the cosine function, remember, it looks uh, starts from one. It's a little bit too crowded now, but yeah. So for this problem, think in one in one dimension. Um, one dimensional is good, and uh, uh, the kinematic equations hold segment wise because the acceleration is constant even though it changes in the middle. All right, thank you very much.